Hello pro strikers. Who doesn't love stab kicks and right hands? If you're a fan of aggressive high pace striking, Sekiru is your guy. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Japanese kickboxing sensation and breaking down his style. Takeru, extremely aggressive. As always, let's start the breakdown with his stance. Stance. Takeru's stance is designed for pressure fighting. It facilitates his ability to keep the fight moving forward whilst maintaining his defensive guard. His wide base, high guard and crouch posture allow him to close distance aggressively, smother opponents and overwhelm them with flurries of strikes. He's all about forcing the issue. Takiru typically adopts a wide stance with his feet positioned slightly further apart than a traditional Muay Thai stance. This wide base gives him solid balance and stability, allowing him to plant his feet firmly when throwing power punches. It also provides him with a strong foundation to absorb or block strikes when moving forward, a key component for pressure fighters. He's got to be able to take it. He wants to be in a position to counter back immediately where possible. He often walks forward, breaking stance and gives little regard for what might come back his way. However, his offense first fighting style can be to his detriment and his fighting stance can be flawed, which we'll talk about in more detail later. Closing the distance. One of Takira's most effective tools is his ability to close the distance aggressively. The space is the hardest thing to overcome in a fight and it can feel like stepping off of a ledge. He feels really far away, what do I do? Is a common thought many practitioners have had in the gym, ring and cage. Leading can be very difficult against a moving and responsive target. Is not a bad fighter at all, it's just Adesanya is too good. Just pick him off at will, flipping right hand again, loud and in trouble. Takiru often doesn't give a damn about all that waiting around. He's not an overthinker, but when he does decide to be a little bit more patient, he goes about it using his lead leg and any left kick will do. Takiru's lead leg is a key weapon in his arsenal. Without even switching stances, he'll lift his leg and strike the opponent's body or legs, effectively controlling the distance. This is a very karate way to throw a kick and the foot is his primary weapon as opposed to a tie style roundhouse kick or switch kick that usually targets with the shin. This is a trademark of Japanese fighters who usually come from some sort of karate background. Here we can see him using a stabbing style roundhouse kick against super leg. The stabbing front kick is another Takiru go-to. Here we see Takiru lift his lead leg to stab front kicks into the midsection of his opponent. Stabbing the toes into the torso can be extremely painful for the opponent. The tie style tip is used more as a defensive technique to off-balance opponents, whereas the stab is jamming the toes and ball of the foot into the sensitive areas of the body. Here we see Takiru stab a rear kick into the gut of his opponent. The first one definitely made his man take notice. The second, throwing the lead leg, floored Mr. Zinn for an eight count. These shots to the body add up over the course of a fight, and this attritional damage is a big part of Sakira's strategy to drain his opponents. Attacking the body mercilessly starts to bring the opponent's hands down and opens them up for shots to the head. The advantage of doing this with the lead leg is Takiru remains in stance when he falls forward. He can use the stab kicks to bring himself into range and follow up with a combination of punches. After a front kick with the left leg, he can land in a deep wide stance ready to deliver power punches. Now there is always the worry of jamming the toes into the opponent's elbow and that will be a concern for anyone new to the technique, but the risk is worth the reward. If you'd like a video solely focusing on the stab kick, let me know in the comments. Knees. Knees could also fall into the category of closing the distance for Takira. He often lunges in with the knee to the body and he's unconcerned if it leaves him slightly off balance. What matters is that it gets him into punching range. This move becomes even more dangerous when his opponents are cornered or pressed against the ropes with nowhere to go. Takira will lead with the knee and frame with both arms to stifle any potential counters. From here, he is in the pocket and can start to think about landing his punch combinations. Takiru spearing his knee into the midsection of his opponent can be very off-putting and make it more difficult for them to step forward. In addition, Takiru's right knee is used to close the distance while switching stances, setting up his right hook beautifully. The knee to hook combination is a hallmark of his style. Not only will the knee sap the opponent's energy, but it draws them into the firefight that Takiru thrives in. Here we see Takiru fake a step through knee, bringing his right hip forward, which causes the opponent to react and open up for Takiru's right hook. His constant barrage of push kicks, knees and punches is reminiscent of a Muay Thai fighter with the speed and volume of a K1 kickboxer, although the techniques are thrown slightly differently. 
throwing in combination. As talked about previously, Takiru is a buzzsaw. His offbeat rhythm is a nightmare for his opponents. Many expect Takiru to step back or reset after a flurry of punches. This is the norm, particularly in tie boxing, but instead he continues to pile on the pressure. Takiru doesn't just attack the torso with kicks and knees, he loves a good body punch. He will lead with the right hook to the body, which is a dangerous technique to open up with. Takiru is offensive minded. He's thinking more about landing his own shot than the potential repercussions. This confidence is a crucial part of his game. Here we see Takiru have his opponent backed into the corner. He's broken him down and he has him in a defensive shell. Takiru has such a wearing style, he turns his opponents into literal punching bags. The double up body shot is another Takiru classic. Once again, his opponent is in survival mode, meaning Takiru has free reign to unload. Throwing left hook into right hook or vice versa is a great way to deliver power punches in quick succession, as the rotation of one punch can flow straight through into the next. As Takiru mixes up the head and body so frequently, it makes it very difficult for an opponent to defend themselves correctly. Another favourite of the Japanese buzzsaw is the dipping right hand, taking his head off of line with the right hand to pitch a hook as he brings himself back up. This is a favourite for many fighters that favour the left hook. Alex Pereira is another great example of using the same methodology. Here we see Takiru take his head off the line as he throws through the right hand. It's not an overhand as his elbow is in line with the fist, making it more of a straight punch. But he has dipped his head off to the side and dropped his level as he's thrown it. This is a great idea in the midst of an exchange as it takes a fighter away from straight punches. It brings their head off of the line. The opponent, who's in southpaw stance, attempts his own right hand. Unfortunately for him, Takiru has thrown his left hook tight, beating the opponent to the punch and flooring him for the count. It's the ones you don't see coming which hurt the most. When Takiru backs his opponents up to the ropes, he unleashes heavy body shots with relentless volume, often throwing far more punches than his opponent can anticipate. Fighters who shell up too long often find themselves caught in a storm of punches, opening themselves up to Takiru's power shots when they try to counter. In order to counter effectively in an exchange, you need to be defending appropriately. For example, when a boxer shoulder rolls a shot, they mitigate the damage and force the opponent to ever so slightly overextend, which compromises their balance. The shoulder roll mechanics keep the right side of the defender loaded, meaning the right hand counter is ready to go. The same can be said when a fighter slips or rolls, as the missed punch causes the opponent to be off balance whilst creating momentum for the follow-up counter punch of the defender. If a fighter is in a purely defensive shell, they aren't riding with the punches and rotating the torso, it makes it much more difficult to counter punch effectively when the fighter is already in motion and connecting with his shots. It's much harder to stop Takiru in his tracks when he's in the midst of an exchange. Flaws Managing distance is key to defeating him, but it's easier said than done. Takiru's relentless pressure only intensifies as the rounds progress, making it very difficult to keep him at bay. Southpaw fighters tend to give him the most trouble, as left side attacks from an orthodox fighter are going to the close side of a southpaw stance. As mentioned previously, his left leg is a big part of his game from distance. His overaggression can be exploited by crafty fighters who are able to pick at him from the outside and then nullify the inside work with a tire. Tension jabbed Takiru's face off in their super fight and managed to drop him with a well-timed backhand set up beautifully with the jab. This was a prime example of Takiru being reckless with his approach. Tension would exploit Takiru's bad footwork habits, with him often walking to range and breaking his stance. He didn't have enough variety with his jab and would throw too many committed shots, which became readable, whereas Tension used a lot of smoke and mirror tactics to keep the pressure at bay. Go check out Pro Striking's video on Tension to find out more. Another major flaw to Takiru's fighting style is his lack of overall defense. The way he stands, often heavy on the lead foot and crouched over, makes him very susceptible to leg kicks. Being heavy on the front leg makes him unable to lift the lead leg to block. This obviously makes him more susceptible to the low kick in itself, but it also makes him more prone to retreat as his primary form of defense. As the majority of his weight is in his front foot, it makes him more inclined to use it as springboard to push back off and step backwards. Takiru has a tendency to pull away. Now this works great when avoiding the first or second strike, but he can be caught when a fighter applies a sustained attack. Sounds so very well. Oh, beautiful two punch jab to follow with the leg kick. Takiru's being pressured. Here we see Mr. Zin step in on a jab cross, catching Takiru with a two. He bridged the gap hard and fully committed, meaning he covered the appropriate distance to land the second punch. 
as Takira is pulling away, he's unable to counter and concedes the point. On the next occasion, Zin doesn't just bridge with the 1-2, he follows up with a 3 as he steps through, catching Takira out of position and off balance, flooring him for the count. durability and mental toughness. That said, Takira's physicality is another major factor in his success. He's willing to take a punch in order to deliver one, confident that his power will overwhelm his opponent. He bets on himself in every exchange. He knows he can take a shot and he weaponizes his durability, albeit at times not a wise fighting style, but it is an entertaining one. His imposing style allows him to physically push his opponents around the ring and he's basically a bit of a bully. Once Takira finds his rhythm and flow, he's nearly unstoppable. Takiru Segawa is undeniably one of the most exciting fighters to watch in kickboxing. His combination of power, technique and sheer aggression makes every fight a spectacle. Whether he's breaking down his opponent with pinpoint body shots or overwhelming them with flurries of punches, Takiru is always in the ring to finish a fight and his highlight reel proves it. This is what has made him such a fan favourite. As always, thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to see more technical deep dives, breakdowns and tutorials, head over to the Pro Striking Patreon now. If you like Japanese kickboxing, then there are some other great breakdowns on the channel, with the Akihiro Keneko breakdown being my personal favourite. Pro Striking appreciates you when they're watching Takiru use his toes to claim a man's soul.